Here's Michigan State's head coach now, Mark Seventh Dento. year here as a, as a staff, I guess I would say, because I always consider our staff as, as one. But uh, 2012 was the year, I think, of uh, the inches that we didn't come up with and uh, the year sort of resolved. We're excited about 2013 coming and uh, look forward to it. We sort of uh, feel like I sort of feel like our football team has a little bit of an edge to them right now. We've got a lot of experience back. We brought uh, Blake Treadwell with us, who's a, really a four-year four year starter for us. He's an offensive guard for us. Uh, we brought Max Bulla and uh, Darquez Denard with us, so they'll be uh, exciting to talk with as well. Uh, six straight bowl games for us. The last two uh, we were able to win. There is a, a feeling, uh, I think, among our football team of, of a foundation has been laid, but we're still chasing a dream right now. So. As we move forward, uh, we're looking forward to, to our first football game against Western, and uh, I will take some, uh, some questions at this time. Take our first question down here right in front of us, stage left. <clears throat> Mark, could you talk about James Kittredge and his weight gain and recovery, Brandon Clements, and then Jack Conklin coming out of the spring. Several defensive players said they thought he was the number one uh, offensive tackle, and he's third on the chart. Uh, yeah, beginning with uh, Brandon Clemens, uh, he's healthy to go, he's ready to go. Uh, James Kittredge, uh, you know, I really don't really want to talk too much about our injuries and such, but, uh, uh, you know, he'll be, he'll be set to go. He'll be coming to camp, maybe a little lingering a little bit, but uh, he'll be fine and uh, get his weight back as we, as we move forward. But uh, uh, Conklin, I think uh, Jack is, uh, is an outstanding young player for us. He's a young man that we actually brought in last year as a, uh, as a recruited walk-on. And... Put on scholarship in January, and he's 320 pounds now, about six foot six, and runs it very, very well. That's what really attracted us to him. Uh, he was probably put on about 30 pounds or so since he's been there. Good, solid weight, and uh, I think he's going to have a tremendous career at Michigan State. Uh, how he how he plays this year is going to be dependent on a lot of people because we've got a lot of experience back at that position, the offensive line in general, and uh, so the um, competition should be should be stiff. Raise your hands high if you have a question. We have one back here, middle stage left. Uh, Coach Mike Griffith from M Live. Uh, it's been publicized that Cook recently has been working with a, a quarterback guru. Can you talk about that and how the quarterback battle will play out in fall camp? Uh, sure. Uh, our quarterback position, first of all, I think is much stronger than it was last year. Last year we really had uh, – a couple of young players. We had a true freshman coming in, and Tyler O'Connor. Now he's a red-shirted freshman. He's had a lot of reps in spring. We had Connor Cook coming in at that particular time with one year under his belt. Now he has experience. We had Andrew Maxwell uh, as our starter, but he had limited experience. Now he has, you know, 13 games of starting experience. Uh, Damian Terry comes in as a true freshman who has that outstanding athlete and. Uh, Big body, 230-pound guy, and a lot of these guys, you know, they all go about 220 and about 6'3". Um, what they do collectively in August is, will really determine as we move, move forward. Right now, you know, Andrew is our number one quarterback, and he's got a great deal of experience and, and a lot of confidence right now. With that said, you know, Connor Cook has played as everybody knows, and I think that's been a big positive for us. As far as Connor working out, I think the question was, as far as he was working out with some people this summer, you know, he took a week and went out and did some things, much like a lot of our players have done in the past, you know, spending a, a week with a quarterback, speci specific quarterback coach or, you know, a group of punters or, or those type of things. So uh, uh, he's excited about where he's at as well, and his confidence is very high. So we're looking forward to the competition. Next question is down in front stage right. Yeah, Coach, um, my question is, over the past few years on the recruiting trail, you've kind of gone into the state of Wisconsin a little bit more. Could you talk about you know, why Wisconsin, considering the rest of the Big Ten footprint and, you know, a lot more players in Ohio and Michigan and, and everything mm -hmm. like that? You know, Wisconsin is, is relatively close to Michigan when you look at it on a map. I know the Great Lakes are right there, but uh, Brad Salem, our, our recruiting coordinator and the coach that recruits up there, has done an outstanding job. He's got ties up there, good football, and we think we found a sort of a little bit of a niche. You know, Trey Waynes is going to be an outstanding player for us probably be a four-year starter for us here or three-year starter here these next three years. Uh, tremendous athlete and 
and we've won some on some players up there. So uh, we've got some other guys like Mark Scarpinato, you know, R.J. Shelton's a guy who's come down, you know, Shimura's come in. So we've got some guys that, uh, that I think are going to make a mark on our football team, and we're going to continue recruiting the Midwest. That's a level one recruiting area for us. It's relatively close for us. And if you take the ferry, you're 60 miles away, so we're good to go. Floor is open. Raise them high. Question down here, stage left in the front. Mark, Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. Uh, why did you decide to bring Jim Bowman onto your staff? What does he bring, uh, do you think, to the table? And then number two, as you look forward into the future, how much of your scheduling is going to be uh, sort of predicated on trying to be in the mix for the uh, final four, so to speak, as the uh, playoff situation changes? Well, with Coach Bowman, uh, you know, this is the fourth time he's been on a staff where I've been. You know, Youngstown State for five years, you know, at Michigan State, when I first went there the first time around with, with Nick Saban, down to Ohio State with Coach Tressel, and now back up here. So he brings a tremendous uh, feeling of security, I guess, in terms of knowing him as a person, knowing his credibility and his character, first of all, and then also knowing what he knows as a football coach. He's been an offensive coordinator at the highest level. Uh, he's coached tight ends in the NFL. He's a guy that I think with, brings new ideas and a new dimension. We needed a guy to offset um, you know, with, leading, with Roshar, Coach Roshar leaving, leaving as an offensive line, tight end guy. We wanted to bring the same type of uh, position coach in and all of those things. And then just the, the credibility really as a person I think is, is so important. So he's uh, been like a brother to me throughout my coaching career. And, um, you know, I trust him, trust him explicitly to do the very best he can. And I trust him with, his, with players in terms of how he treats players and, and what he gets out of the players. So uh, a lot of experience there. As far as our, uh, our scheduling, I don't think there's any question that, uh, you know, as the, as the years progress, things are, things are going to start to get more and more complicated, I guess, in the scheme of things as far as the, the college football playoffs and all the different things that are going on in college football right now. But uh, as far as scheduling, I think we'll play nine games. We'll always have a, a big opponent out of conference to play versus our schedule's going to be strong, and it'll always be our hope to, uh, to chase the dream, as I said. You know, to go to the Rose Bowl, to, to become a champion at the highest level, to become a national champion, to get in the championship format. And I think uh, while we were close last year, we lost some games to uh, some great football teams by very narrow margins. The two previous years, though, I'd look, if you look at those two years, we're right where we needed to be to be in a, a format like that, to be able to, to be realistically playing in a game in a championship venue. We'll stay down here front to uh, stage left. Coach, have you and your staff finalized how you guys will use Jarius Jones and his uh, talents? How we'll use Jarius? Yes. Jarius the guy that uh, can play outside backer for us. He had a great spring. If you look, and you always point, I think, to, to your football team, you ask yourself, who's a guy that's really popped out of and really had an impressive spring? I think Jarius Jones is one of those guys, especially on defense. Uh, he's weighing 216, 220 pounds or so. He's got the ability to go back and play safety. He's got a lot of experience back there, both safety's positions. He can play what we call our star position, which is a, our outside backer, our wheel linebacker. Uh, and he's made a lot of plays for us. So he figures in the, he sort of figures right in there. With, is it he or Taiwan Jones playing that other linebacker position? So we'll see how it all shapes out in August. But uh, as I said earlier, we, we have competition uh, on this football team. We've got a lot of guys back with experience. Too many to talk about, really. The defensive side of the ball is loaded with seven starters back, but a lot of players that are, you know, are ready to make their mark. Our offensive side of the ball, uh, a lot of players back, a lot of experience back at wide receiver. Uh, we don't lose a quarterback, really. We don't lose a wide receiver. We did lose a, a running back and an outstanding tight end. Um, but um, you know, everybody's losing somebody, so we've got to just uh, pick up the pieces there and, you know, and get after it. I'm excited about water. those guys playing, though. Sorry, Coach. Time for one or two more. We have uh, one here in the back on uh, stage right. Hey, Mark, I see uh, Skylar Brooklyn's number two in the depth chart at right tackle. How is he? Is he going to stick it out? And it, is he the reason France has moved back to left tackle and foe to uh, right tackle? I, c I couldn't hear it. Which guy are you talking about? Sorry, Skylar Brooklyn. Oh, Skylar. Uh, right now, Skylar is a guy that, uh, you know, is a little bit up in the air. We'll talk about him probably next week and see where all, how all this falls out. Um, 
He's been a guy who's been a starter for us, but he's battled some injuries. Time for one more. You put your hand up. We'll get to you. I think we're good to go. Go green. Oh, you got one? <laughs> we do have one back here. Sorry. Okay. I like the attempt. I'm sorry about that, Coach. Um, what, does this year have a slogan or a mantra like P4RB, prepare for Rose Bowl, and what would that be? This year's mantra? Yes. Chase it. Okay. Simple. Very simple. Thank you very much, Coach. Here's a look at the Spartans' outlook for 2013. You heard him talk about Andrew Maxwell. Basically said he is the number one QB, although you can kind of read between the lines and see that Coach D'Antonio does seem open for some competition. Big losses, of course, Le'Veon Bell and Deion Sims basically were the offense last year. 